as has been noted elsewhere, it's getting to the point where the Marvel Universe movies can only properly be reviewed against each other. The superhero factory has become so expert at making these damn things that it gets boring if you don't assume a basic expectation of competence going in that you wouldn't necessarily apply to other blockbusters. See also Pixar. Oh, it's better than every other cartoon released this year? Gee, what a fucking surprise. How else is it? But with that in mind, the one place where the MCU has consistently stumbled, i.e. where they've made what for anyone else would be a pretty good movie, but for them feels like a misstep, has been in making direct sequels. Iron Man 2 wasn't as good as the first Iron Man, Age of Ultron wasn't as good as the first Avengers, Thor 2 I know has its fans, but it just doesn't have the fun of Thor 1. To be honest, apart from Captain America The Winter Soldier, it really does seem like Marvel's most consistent ailment has been constipation. They have a lot of difficulty with number twos. I'm so sorry. Now, a lot of the time, the issue has been a feeling that they lack a certain amount of freedom. Once a Marvel debut movie is a hit, the characters get scheduled for cameos and crossovers down the road, and the sequels are left trying to develop characters whose status quo can now only change just so much. The Guardians of the Galaxy do seem to be laboring within that very sort of framework. The next really big jump in their story will be when they show up in Avengers 3, which leaves Volume 2 in danger of having to do a sequel while jogging in place, i.e. if the Guardians or their setup would have changed too drastically, it might lessen the promise of seeing the Guardians meet the Avengers and the whoever the hell else is in that one. But whereas Iron Man and Thor's sequels both faulted by deciding to spend their middle movie doing tedious world building busy work, Guardians Volume 2 decides to take the opportunity to dig into its main characters more deeply, cutting back on the interplanetary travelogue that defined much of the first film and instead splitting its cast really between only about three main locations with an emphasis on working through their ever-present hangups and personal demons. As a a result, even though it's playing with some fairly big and abstract sci-fi concept, packs in a ton of Marvel Easter eggs, and the stakes are eventually, once again, the fate of the galaxy itself, Volume 2 really does feel like a much smaller and more intimate movie than its predecessor. I honestly did not see that coming. Fortunately, returning writer-director James Gunn is really good at character work, so making the film primarily all about its various characters having soul-bearing conversations about their anxieties is right in his wheelhouse. On balance, it's probably about as good as the original, even if it does inevitably lack some of that new franchise smell. In any case, the story proper involves the Guardians themselves being on the run from a race of genetically engineered gold-skinned superhumans called the Sovereign, after Rocket manages to piss off their vengeful queen Aisha, who conscripts the Ravagers in order to pursue them further, and who also have their own grudges against Peter Quill from the first movie. Circumstances eventually split the team into two different directions, with Rocket and Baby Groot getting pulled into a Ravager mutiny situation alongside Yondu, while Peter, Gamora, and Drax meet up with Kurt Russell as the projected human avatar of who claims to be Peter's real father, and offers him the possibility of attaining unbelievable power and his long-sought familial connection. But potentially at the cost of the surrogate family he's formed with his friends. Amidst all of this, we also have Drax forming a hilariously awkward friendship with newcomer Mantis, and Gamora and Nebula working through the damage of their mutually abusive childhoods at the hand of Thanos. To say more would probably constitute spoilers for what turns out to be a fairly surprising and complex plot setup, but suffice it to say it all threatens to be just a little bit heavy for a sequel in such an irreverent franchise, but Gunn knows how to deflate an overly earnest scene with a well-timed joke, and does so reliably throughout the film, which helps it stay breezy even as it heads into some pretty dark territory thematically. There are very few properties that can turn a bravura sequence that literally depicts the full-blown slow-motion massacre of well over a hundred people into a simultaneously funny and even heartwarming set piece, but this turns out to be one of them. It also ends up having a really solid, interesting, and very hateable villain, and that helps a lot. Still, I'll be curious to see how it's received overall, given that it opts to spend so much of its runtime putting the big-scale combat stuff into the background, instead centering the action on chases and escapes, and getting all morose about how damaged and broken the ostensibly funny, wacky main characters are. For my own part, I agree I had more raw fun in the first one, but I appreciate the deeper and weirder places this one goes to, and it wraps up in a very satisfying way. The that stays true to the innate weirdness of the series and delivers something pretty special, even as it does kind of rely, like the rest of the film if we're being honest, a bit too much on callbacks to the stuff that everyone liked about the original. In the end, while it was probably impossible to recreate the out-of-nowhere newness of the first film even if they'd tried, basically everything else that worked still works. These are great characters, impeccably well cast, under the supervision of a genuine auteur talent inhabiting easily the most unique and bizarre status quo in the entire modern block scene, Marvel or otherwise. And even while no longer technically original in
in and of itself, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is still more fresh and different than anything else Hollywood will offer up in the next few months. Three stars, look guys, we all know we were all gonna go see it anyway, so enjoy the fact that you're probably gonna enjoy it.